Last July, we were just talking about this, you actually sold out of some of your holdings, citing that regulatory uncertainty. Given the widening crackdown, would to some present an even bigger existential threat at the moment? What kind of forms the, the bull case for adding to that position now for you? Yeah, um, what we're seeing is that the judicial and legislative branches of our government, you know, separation of powers, uh, are starting to weigh in on this topic. And um, uh, the regulator, the SEC, is part of the more part of the executive branch appointed by the president. Uh, and we're, as we're seeing cases go through court uh, uh, in the judicial system, the SEC, I mean, the, the judicial system is questioning the SEC's decisions here. Uh, and so we think this is a good thing. We, we actually think this is uh, going to be uh, in the, the courts and in, in legislation for perhaps years. Uh, and what has happened in the meantime? Uh, we have Binance under increasing regulatory scrutiny for uh, more criminal activities and fraud being one of them. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, we have the competition to Coinbase really... Um, we think it's disappearing. Uh, and so that's a good thing longer term for Coinbase. And Kathy, you're still maintaining your confidence across crypto more broadly. Are you still confident in that $1 million target for Bitcoin? For Bitcoin, uh, yes, actually. The more uncertainty and volatility there is in the global economies, uh, uh, the the more uh, our confidence increases in Bitcoin. Um, and, and one of the reasons is we've just been through an inflationary scare. We think it was very much supply chain driven and uh, and, and uh, Bitcoin was is a hedge against inflation. Uh, we also believe now that the bigger risk is deflation, not inflation. And why would Bitcoin do well in that circumstance? It would do well uh, because it's an antidote to counterparty risk in the traditional financial system. On the Bitcoin blockchain, um, Everything is transparent. It may be pseudonymous, but we can see all the transactions, all of the activity, and therefore we have a much better understanding of how little counterparty risk there is uh, in the blockchain world. Kathy, so what you're saying is that you expect those accusations on Binance to actually prevail if you're expecting Coinbase to actually benefit from this. And wouldn't that lead to actually more regulatory crackdown on Coinbase if it's actually become a bigger player even in this industry? It was interesting to see uh, the SEC sue Binance on one day and then the next day uh, Coinbase. Uh, and they were trying to put them in the same bucket. They are not at all in the same bucket. Um, we have two former officials of Binance US uh, coming forward, and actually we now understand that they have been working with regulators and the government generally uh, to help the government understand how Binance US was not separate and distinct from Binance International and how much CZ controlled Binance US and how much of Binance's uh, data was uh, in China and how much commingling of funds there were. Uh, Coinbase is not accused of any of this. And it is unfortunate that the SEC uh, took action against Coinbase the day after Binance and then seemed to muddy uh, Chairman Gensler as he was on uh, one of the major news channels was trying to implicate Coinbase in the same way that he was implicating uh, Binance. No. They're, they're, they're very different. Uh, there are questions about what's a security and about staking. Those are the two questions uh, that Coinbase is, is facing uh, and Binance is facing. Uh, but most of the other questions around Binance have nothing to do with Coinbase.